Good morning, folks. We've got the alignment of Sun, Mercury, and Venus just one day away, an update on yesterday's CME, the rare quakes continue, and the climate debate rages on. Let's begin with yesterday's featured solar eruption. Came off the incoming limb, and SOHO confirms it will miss Earth, only a moderate ejecta cloud at best anyway. Let's jump over to today's features at spaceweathernews.com where 193 angstroms gives us pretty much everything we need to see. Only Earth-facing feature was a river of electricity sent southeast from the lone active region on the disk. Beautiful surface surge, and best of all, it's not dangerous. Coming to the solar flaring, we continue to find the Earth-facing quiet effect dominating. Can't even get C-class flares, and a filament top right came the closest to any form of an ejection, but it slid back down to the surface. Looking at the sunspots, we've just got the one grouping with the north trailing satellite. We see beta magnetism, but no mixing. Instead, just the nice polarity separation and lack of flare potential. Solar wind is calm and calming further. Earth's magnetic shield doing just fine this morning. On to this. Folks, I've been so focused on the trailing extension of this coronal hole, I honestly didn't think the leading edge of the next one was going to be on its heels. Not like this. Almost on the same longitude, the positive opening finishes and the new negative opening begins to face Earth. The cause for the confusion? Gong does not do a good job showing the position of those openings. Not nearly as good as SDO211. Anyway, folks, we'll take the rare location rumbles over huge magnitude quakes all day, every day. Another rare location shake that two experts consider to be at 6.1. By the way, the bold red is to be most trusted. And in the Atlantic, it's one thing for the ridge to have an uptick like we saw over the last week. But an intraplate quake like that north of the Caribbean? Earth is really pulling from its odd earthquake bag here the last week of the month. Jeez. Well, folks, when one scientist said the global warming pause wasn't real, we predicted a flood of propaganda around it, and then a few months later, it would be strongly refuted. These two articles not only dive into the fact that the pause in warming really did happen, but NOAA is failing to release the one thing that could show fraud, the same thing that kicked off the climate gate scandal of temperature fixing some years ago. Anthony Watts, Tony Heller, and Rolf are going to be on this like crazy, so we'll probably have more to report soon. Folks, we're at the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org, and while the homepage has tons of free resources if you scroll down, the top stories there today are a Fly on the Wall podcast and the Disaster Prediction app. Folks, we are just 2K below the Mobile Observatory Project's fundraising effort with 10 days ago, and we can't lose to 2014, can we? Besides, this is a much better project. Click around. And of course, an epic Fly on the Wall podcast came out yesterday around lunchtime. Members, click premium and then Fly on the Wall. You'll see the latest episode. We've got pressure and radar forecast in the top viewer locations, followed by current conditions at the South American Earth spots and shots of our star to close. It's 4.05 a.m. in the Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.